everyone. I'm Adam Brown, and this is Shell Point Today for Monday, May 4th. On today's show, we will look at several upcoming Academy classes. Adrian Kerr will tell us about his class on the secrets of Stonehenge. Herb Sklar has a workshop on phone photography. And Terry Kolath will help us find out which of today's multimedia technologies is right for you. But first, we want to remind you of the summer hours for a couple of Shell Point popular destinations. The gift shop on the island is now open from 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Monday through Saturday. And the community thrift store hours on McGregor Boulevard are Tuesday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. The model train room is now closed through the month of October. For over 10,000 years, the site of Stonehenge in southern England has been an important religious and burial location. Over the last few years, there's been intense archaeological investigation into the people who built Stonehenge and the site itself. Adrian Kerr's class tomorrow will uncover all of the secrets of Stonehenge, and he's standing by to talk with Terry Kolath about it now. Hi, I'm Terry Kolath, and I'm here today with Professor Adrian Kerr. We're talking about the next program in his history series for us, his Tuesday morning series. This one is Stonehenge. Thank you for joining me, Adrian. It's a pleasure, Terry. Always a pleasure to come to Shell Point. Thank you. Um, we're talking about the secrets of Stonehenge, and we say for over 10,000 years, the site of Stonehenge has been an important religious and burial location in southern England. Why is that? Stonehenge's story is still developing. Um, we thought we knew everything back in the 70s, and then in recent years, they have used ground-penetrating radar to look at the whole of the greater Stonehenge uh, site. And through that research, which is only 15 years old, even less, um, we begin to realize that this wasn't a uh, short, sharp construction of some megal megalithic stones. This was the, a progression from really ancient times um, to what we see remaining today. But at its height, it was almost like a, a city of the dead or a religious city. And we found tens of buildings under the ground where different um, many temples were set up, shrines were set up, but it seemed to have been a religious center um, going back uh, to 10,000 or 8,000 BC. Why there? Um, we thought it was unique. I mean, in the 60s, we thought Stonehenge was unique, but in fact, the Stonehenge people um, were the Beaker people, and they spread throughout Europe, down to Spain, into England, into France, into Germany, and Switzerland. Um, it's curious to know where they came from. We're not sure. They didn't leave us any written explanations. Wow. But they had the same common uh, beaker-type pottery, so we know they're of a similar nature, uh, ethnic background. And these beaker people didn't just build Stonehenge. They built other henges, um, uh, circles, um, throughout England, of course, but also in Germany. And only in the last 15 years, we found uh, what would have been a wood henge um, through excavation of uh, a similar size to Stonehenge, which dates to the same period. So we're beginning to realize that these beaker people had a whole series of religious circles throughout their various states. And we just happen to know Stonehenge is the best one. And of course, there's also Avery Stone Circle. Following on from that, literally in the last 10 years, up in Scotland, in the Orkney Islands, they've discovered a, um, a henge or a series of monolithic stones with stone buildings, which, were, which was a religious site in the Orkney Islands around the same sort of period. My goodness. Well, let's get a little bit of the detail here. What does henge mean? Why stone henge? We're not absolutely sure. There's a number of explanations. The one which I particularly favor is that it's a corruption of a um, old English word meaning a, a lintel. So you have the two major stones and then one connecting it, and that connecting stone was a henge. So stone henge implying a, um, a series of, of, of three stone combinations linked together. Please join us if you can. You can sign up right at the door for Professor Adrian Kerr and the Secrets of Stonehenge. In today's constantly changing world of technology, even early adopters of computers have seen much evolution in functionality and improvements of these devices. They have become so portable that you can simply put them in your pocket and take them with you. No, not a big monitor and keyboard, of course, but with iPads, iPhones, and Android devices, 
Oh yeah, there's also Windows, Google Chrome, and even a watch for your wrist. No wonder it's so easy to get confused and wonder which technology is the right one for me. Well, not to fret. Terry Colath wants you to meet several people that can help you sort through all these high-tech gizmos and find the right products for you. Whether you're just sending and receiving emails, surfing the web, Facebooking, YouTubing, or working with graphic intensive programs, or even doing your taxes. Hi, I'm Terry Colath. I'm here today with the first two people I'm going to introduce you to. You're going to meet people who are very comfortable with technology and are generous enough to share it with you, the residents of Shell Point, through the Academy of Lifelong Learning. We're talking today about a course coming up on May 5th, and it's called, Which Technology is Right for Me? As we've said in the brochure, perhaps you are new to technology, perhaps you love technology, and you just like to learn more about other kinds of devices. Well, if you attend this program, you will be introduced to each of the technologies available through the Academy of Lifelong Learning. I'm going to start today with the people who bring us what I call the I classes iPads, iPhones. Well, I'm going to get an opportunity to talk about the iPad. Uh, I will be giving classes starting with, do I need an iPad? Why do I need it? Will it replace my PC? And then continue with that with, got one, now what? And after we've got one, we need to learn how to use the apps that we can get with it. So I think it's gonna be a great fall term. The iPhone was introduced in 2007 and the iPad in 2010. There are approximately 10 times as many iPhones as iPads. So as far as I see, the iPhone is the center uh, piece of this. There will be things about the Apple, the iWatch or the Apple Watch. So the classes cover all of the iDevices and Penny and I share in much of the teaching. You'll want to come and join Penny and Bruce for the latest and everything else you want to know about the iPad and the iPhone. Now I'm with Russ Cray of Oakmont and Jim Plummer of Parkwood. They're here today to represent the Computer College. The Computer College, as many of you know, was the front runner of technology at Shell Point in the Academy of Lifelong Learning and they're still going strong. Uh, the the most important thing is that PCs have trans have gotten bigger and smaller, bigger in capacity and smaller in size. We hope that uh, we have a course that would be available for you. As the technology keeps evolving, we will try to offer courses to meet those needs. There's different groups of residents here at Shell Point. Some mm -hmm. are just beginning with computers and I've been afraid of them up till now and they, and they want to try them out. And so we have a series this upcoming term in the summer of about seven courses that are oriented towards basics of the computer, the Windows 7 computer, the Windows 8 computer, and you'll hear later on about the Macintosh computer basic course that we're doing this term. There's courses about computer security. There's, there's computers, uh, understanding your computer that Paul Neighbor says. For those that are brand new with computing, those that have been with it for a while and want to tried new applications. We have uh, two different Microsoft Word classes, two different internet classes, and in some total we have 14 classes in the summer. We're going to be talking a little bit about something we have not offered much of in the Academy. Why should we use the Mac? This summer we're going to be looking for the first time at a very basic Mac course. It's going to be a laptop course nice. and we're going to be looking at the scary stuff the what if stuff, the how can I do that stuff. Nice. And everybody is going to get a chance to learn these things and, and uh, some class time to practice them. And toward the end of the course, we're gonna be showing the downloading of a free Office suite, Wonderful. which is comparable to Microsoft Office. Now, Larry, you are um, offering us some alternatives. Alternatives. To the right. Mac, to the PC, and to the right. iPad. Right. I think uh, I'm a real Mac and uh, Apple enthusiast, have been, but there are also alternatives. Mm -hmm. And uh, the alternative for iPhones and iPads are ones that use Google Android system. And then there's another alternative for uh, computers. 
that might be very useful for some residents, and that's a Chromebook. A Chromebook is really just a browser. So if all you're going to do uh, is want to email your grandkids or kids or uh, go on Facebook or browse on the Internet, uh, you don't have to get involved in either operating system. And if you are a resident who would like to learn a little bit more about any of these technologies, you'll have a good 10-minute talk from each of the people you've just um, seen today in this promotional interview. Then you'll have some time to actually go to a table with them, look at the technology they're talking about, and see if it's something you'd like to try. Come out and meet these people and hear what they have to say. We're so proud of them. So proud they're residents at Shell Point and teach for you and your academy. These amazing phones do so much. Using them as a phone is almost secondary. With the little computers inside, you can email, surf the web, and they even have cameras on them. Very good cameras at that. Last week, Herb Sklar talked to us about how to utilize these cameras in his phone photography class. In the workshop, you'll have the opportunity to get hands-on and learn how to take better pictures and work with apps, printers, and much more. Here's Herb. Hi, I'm Terry Colath, and I'm here with Herb Sklar of Eagles Preserve, and we're talking about the second part of his teaching of phone photography. This time we're gonna tell you about the workshop. He's gonna offer a two-day workshop two times in the semester. Thank you for joining me, uh, Herb. You're welcome. Now let's talk about the workshop. What is it? What, what is going to happen when we get with you from 10 to 11.30 two times to focus on phone photography? Uh, we're going to uh, have a lot of fun, and uh, that's for sure. It, we're going to learn how to take selfies, mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to learn how to use some of the software. It's really gotten better and better, and uh, it's not going to take very long before these cameras are, are on par with the DSLRs. It's wonderful because they're so portable, they're so lightweight. Oh, you always and, have it with you. I and, love what and you the, say. And the best camera is the one you have with you. But, but we're going to take the, the workshop a little further. Uh -huh. We're going to, um, everybody who takes the workshop is going to get a selfie. And, and uh, it comes with a mount for a tripod, so you can use the selfie stick like this and extend it out. Or you can put it on a tripod, and it comes with a Bluetooth uh, trigger. So uh, you don't even have to, or somebody can just press the button and bum, it, it, it trips the trigger. And this is for Android and Apple. It has two little buttons, you use one or for the other. So this is a great thing and everybody gets one. And also this is a new Cube printer and um, you'll be able to put your camera in here and, and see it um, print the picture four by six for you. And it's not a bad printer, it's a dye sublimation printer. So let, let's take a selfie and print one and see what happens. All right, I like the idea. Selfie used to be hold the camera out as far as you can and see what you can get in it. Now we have this wand. Okay, right? ready? Uh, what I like to do is I like to take the selfies on, on the timer, on the camera, uh -huh. so, it, so we get ready. Okay, here we go. It's starting to count down now. And smile. All right. That looks pretty good. What do you think? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> All right. We're going to have the two cube printers there, and so everybody can uh, make four by six dye sublimation prints. But you have to have a little app, uh, and the app is free and for Android apps. So you, you get the little app, which we have here, and, and you're going to put it into the dock like that. Okay, and uh, I'm, it says choose a photo. So I, I'm going to choose a photo. I'm going to choose this photo of us. Oh, yeah, that looks pretty good. And, and it says here, I could put four of the pictures uh, on one sheet of one picture. I'm going to print one picture and uh, waiting. And it says, okay, I think, I think it's transferring the image up there. And here it starts. Okay, so you put, the f you put the phone in, you select the picture you want, press it, and then it starts. Now, you notice it's going back and forth. That's because it's printing all four colors. Interesting. Yeah, you can't touch it while it's doing that. Here's the yellow. Oh my gosh. And right, it's... and now it's gonna take it back. Fascinating. And I'm not sure what comes next, red or blue, we'll see. Oh, red. Here's the red plate. So, so Herb, in the class, 
you're going to, are you going to show examples of how um, people can use this equipment other than, are you going to show examples of how to take a better picture? Oh, right? sure. No, absolutely. And we'll be able to critique the pictures because we can print them right out. Right there, right and, there. And, um, if anybody's interested in buying this, it's not that expensive. I think it's under $100. You can, you can buy one uh, and then uh, print it out. What will you do if you don't buy one? Can you take oh, it we, to Walmart? We have, yeah. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about that, how you can uh, take it to different places. But, uh, how do we turn every, out? I think we turned out great. Oh my gosh, it's us. You know, and, and that's a dye <laughs> sublimation print that's not bad. And no. everybody can make up to a dozen of these. That is wonderful. Yeah. This is going to be such an exciting class. And I know it's going to fill right up. So have you decided that you're going to do this forever and ever for a long, long time? <laughs> well, sure. I mean, if people <laughs> so are interested, everybody and it? we will go for an advanced. <laughs> it's changing so rapidly that keeping up with it is, is a challenge. And it's just going to get better and better. That's so fabulous. So I encourage you to take both opportunities. Come to the lecture on Monday, May 4th. And if you want to get down into the details, you will then move on to the two-day workshop, with the two-time workshop with Herb Sklar, giving you an hour and a half each day, three hours, to learn how to do the best selfies you can imagine. And part of it is going to be on your own equipment. That's right. And, and more than selfies, this, this is for everything. And it, you can even make panoramas on these. So it's just open-ended. Yeah, we have focused on selfies, but in, in all reality, we're going to learn how to take pictures of the family, pictures of our trips, any picture we want right. with our phone camera. This little print is capable of making a, a panorama like that. So it's, it is pretty good. Well, I can tell you're having fun I researching am. and bringing this to all of us. This is a fun class. Come and have some fun with Herb Sklar. And now it's time to cover all today's happenings, academy news, menus, and Village Church connections. Right after this important listening to the words preview from David Howenstein. Welcome to an encore performance of Listening to the Words, aired on one of the three Shell Point channels in October of 2011. Marking the first anniversary of this series, it included stories and poems by several of the writers who were featured in that first year. It included members of the then Shell Point Poetry class, including Shell Point resident Ebby Henderson, a South American native who wrote beautiful poetry in her second language of English. I chose this program for a second play after hearing of the recent passing of Ebby Henderson on April 23rd. You will hear her humorous offering titled Uncle Bill. You'll also enjoy the work of Shell Pointers Sue Nelson, Phil Hilton, Jane Kennedy, and David Howenstein. This radio program on TV still plays at the top and then the bottom of each hour of every day, Monday through Sunday. I want this week's encore performance of Program 43 to serve as a thank you to all the authors who've contributed to the show and a special thanks to you, for listening to the words. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the happening segment of Shell Point TV. I'm Bev Chandley, and this is Caitlin Vanskoy, and we're going to tell you about the activities we offer for you here today. We're going to begin Monday's activities with the 8 o'clock men's match play doubles tennis at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. Also at 8 o'clock, we have the mobile mammography van at the Village Church. Virtual bowling will be in the Resident Activity Center at 8.45. 9.15 is the time for billiards at the Resident Activity Center. The Lollygaggers Paddlers will be at the Kayak Storage Facility to leave on their trip at 9.15. And then also at 9.15, we have the Pottery Studio open with instruction available. At 10 o'clock, men's match play doubles tennis will be at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. Also at 10 o'clock, the Suzy Q heads to Matanzas on the Bay. You do need to sign up at the Island Greeters Desk for those Suzy Q trips. The Parkinson's Enrichment Group will be meeting at 10.15 at the Community Room of King's Crown. And at 10.30, the Disciple Men's Study Group will be at the Game Room of the Woodlands. There will be a table tennis clinic at 10.45. That's held down in the Tarpon Room. And our last activity of the morning is at 11.30, we have a Health Connections class, Bar Basics. That's down in the Health Club, and it's currently full. Here's Caitlin to tell you what we have this afternoon. Thank you, Bev. 
We're going to start our afternoon activities off with Mahjong at 12 o'clock in the Sable Room of the Woodlands. We have Advanced Table Tennis at 1.15 in the Tarpon Room. And Samba, the card game, will be played at 1.15 in the Resident Activity Center. At 1.45, we have a Health Connections class, Balance and Mobility, Training Level 1. That'll be in the Health Club, and that's currently full. The BDI-B Club will be in the Oak Room of the Woodlands at 2 o'clock. And at 3 o'clock, we have a Health Connections class, Pilates Stretch. That's in the Health Club. Another Health Connections at 3.30, Aqua Agility and Conditioning at the LifeQuest Aquatic Center. Pickleball will be played at the Pickleball Courts at 4 o'clock. And at 5.30, there's a singles table available at the Crystal, and you do need to make a reservation, and that'll be at the Crystal Dining Room. At 6.30, we have Duplicate Bridge being played in the Game Room of the Woodlands. And at 7 o'clock, we round out our day with square dancing down in the health club, and that's currently full. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Hi, I'm Terry Kolath with your Academy information for Monday, May 4th. We start the day with Academy on the go. Discover the Center for Great Apes. This begins with court pickup on the island at 8.30 for those who have signed up. And then at 10.30, we have Anatomy of Words. And this fittingly starts our academy every single semester. All are welcome in the Oak Room at 10.30. At 1 o'clock, the Aesthetics of Film Photography is a lecture in the Grand Cypress Room of the Woodlands. And at 1.15, Making Word Work for You takes place in the Technology Teaching Center on the island and sign up is required. I'd like to tell you about some new classes coming tomorrow. Writing Your Memoirs on the Computer by two Lakewood residents, Marty Gibson and Lucille Peterson. Understanding Your Computer with Paul Neighbors of Rosemont and a phone photography workshop with Herb Sklar of Eagles Preserve. The Secrets of Stonehenge with Professor Adrian Kerr and our Apple iPad iPhone walk-in clinics begin again with Penny Modridge of Nautilus and some generous resident assistants. We also have a technology class, which technology is right for me? This is going to include many presenters, Penny Modridge of Nautilus and Bruce Finley of Sundial. We'll talk about iPads and iPhones. Jim Plummer of Parkwood and Russ Cray of Oakmont will talk about PCs. Bob Jakubiak of Lucina will talk about Macs. And Larry Brock of Eagles Preserve will talk about some alternatives. They're all leaders in various areas of technology here at Shell Point, so don't miss this great opportunity to listen to them and talk with them after. Menus for Monday. In the Crystal Room, the Crystal Platter is Swiss steak with a baked potato and broccoli. The dinner special is Old Home Cooking Night for $11.95. And the soup of the day is cream of chicken. In the Island Cafe for lunch, the special is a tuna melt with a side salad for $7.25. The dinner special is grilled chicken pesto panini with a cup of soup for $8.25, and the Palm Grill is closed on Mondays. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. My name is Don Stainhook, and I'm the chaplain for the employees, and I'm here with Janice Quinlan, who is our missionary in residence this year, and Janice, you've completed, what, eight months now? Yes, yes. And how's it going? Oh, I've been really enjoying my year. And your time here will be coming to an end at the end of July or yes. so? I plan to return to Thailand around the 30th of July. Okay. Well, blessings when you return and you will be missed when you leave. Thank you. So, Don, tell me a little bit about your job because I hear that you're going to be retiring. So tell me a little bit about the position of employee chaplain. I've been here a little bit over eight years, and it's been a wonderful time of providing ministry to the employees. Um, mm. The position basically responds to employee needs, uh, whether it's a physical need or an emotional need or a relationship need, mm. a legal issue, financial issue. The general principle is whatever is a concern to the employee is a concern that they can share with me. Mm. And I try to help them as best I can and refer them to uh, local resources. Uh, which are available to them, and to help them walk through the valley to get to the light on the other side. Mm. One of the programs that has been very beneficial to the employees is that the Benevolent Program at the Village Church yes. has created the opportunity for me to give a $50 food card 
and a $50 gas card to employees that have a special financial need. Mm -hmm. And one of my concerns was that when I retire at the end of April, who would take over that program? And Janice, I'm so thankful that you volunteered to administer that program until you leave at the end of July. Yes, I'm looking forward to the opportunity to get to know some of the employees as well. You Most will. of my contacts have been with the residents these mm -hmm. eight months. But very happy to do that. Well, it certainly is a blessing to the employees to know that there's a safety net that they can reach out and receive the assistance that they need. So blessings on you as you continue that and program. And you too, Don, as you yeah. retire. Blessings on you. Yeah, our retirement um, has changed considerably uh, with the relocation of our daughter and son-in-law and two grandsons. Uh, our daughter, Jen, works for Lee Memorial and they recently purchased a home in our subdivision mm -hmm. so that our two precious grandsons will be living about a half mile from where we live in a gated community and be able to ride their bikes to grandpa and grandma's house. So we are expecting during the summer at least the doorbell to ring every afternoon around three o'clock asking for cookies or something oh, like wow, that. Oh, how precious is that? That yeah. is so precious. Yeah. So. Blessings on you Thank as you. you retire. It's been a privilege to be here. And thank you for being willing to volunteer and step in the gap and administer this program for the employees. That'll be such a blessing to them. And this is Don Stainhook with Village Church Connections. May you have a blessed day. Thanks for joining us on today's show. Tune in again tomorrow as we learn the seriousness of having a fall and how you can prevent them in an upcoming Health Connections class. The Finemark Bank will give us some tips on changing your mailing address if you're headed back up north this summer. And Heather Batty and Melanie Broad will provide us another fit tip. Until then, I'm Adam Brown for Shell Point Today for Monday, May 4th. We hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you again tomorrow.